Hello there friend, welcome back. Quite different from our previous topics, today we are diving into a topic that might have left you a little shocked, quite literally. If you've ever experienced those unexpected jolts when touching your PC cassette or keyboard, you should know that you're not alone. Electrical shocks can be not only surprising, but also a bit concerning, but fear not. Because in this video we are unraveling the mystery behind these zaps and equipping you with the knowledge you need to stay safe and keep your devices running smoothly. So if you are ready to zap proof your tech life, hit that like button, hit subscribe and let's get right into it. The most important question that we need to ask ourselves is that the shock is continuous or instant. Because if it's not continuous, it's a pretty good news and it means that it's probably caused by static electricity. Now, what is static electricity? Static electricity is an imbalance of electric charges within or on the surface of a material or between materials. The charge remains until it is able to move away by means of an electric current or electrical discharge. For example, this can happen when you're wearing socks and they have been in constant contact with the carpet as your negatively charged hand gets very close to the positively charged side of the metal, the air between your hand and the knocker also becomes electrically charged. This allows electrons to suddenly flow from your hand to the knocker. The sudden flow of electrons is a static discharge, and this is probably what happened between you and your PC chassis. If these kinds of discharges keep happening to you, you need to be careful not to touch sensitive parts of your PC, like the motherboard. This is why many tech specialists use special wrist straps that help safely discharge static electricity. So how about when the shock is continuous? In that case, we need to check a few things. In order to be efficient, we start with the less time and cost consuming checks. Check number one, proper grounding. Now, this is a very important check and the problem you're having is probably rooted here. You ask why? Let me first explain what is a grounding or earthing system. Technically, an earthing or grounding system establishes a connection between distinct components of an electrical power system and the earth's conductive surface. Grounding is very important for power supply units, especially for ones with 750 watts or higher power ratings. The ground cord of the PSU is connected to the external metal plate of the PSU and is responsible for sucking out all the unwanted electricity. One might wonder if my PSU is working properly. It doesn't even need the ground cord. I'm sorry, but this is very wrong. Your PSU needs its grounding all the time, even when the PSU is turned off. I am not familiar with the exact design of PSUs, but all of them produce unwanted electricity on the surface and if it's not properly grounded, these voltages can reach your PC case and cause annoying and sometimes dangerous shocks, just like what you are currently experiencing, which can be damaging to some PC parts. Long story short, you should always check your grounding. If your power outlet has three sockets, the third one is for grounding. It should be noted that in different countries, with different standards, the shape of the grounded outlet is different, and you should check yours by searching it up. Here are some of the most common ones. It should be noted, as it's easy to overlook, that if you are using a power strip, the power strip needs to have air wiring too. Otherwise, your PC won't have grounding. Next, we should check for the possibility of EMI, which is electromagnetic interference. EMI can originate from various electronic devices, including computers and printers. They have the potential to affect any electronic circuit. Sometimes, EMI can even travel through power lines, causing unexpected issues. To troubleshoot and potentially resolve EMI related problems, we should consider these steps. Step 1 Changing the power outlet. 
Begin by relocating your computer to a different ball outlet or an entirely separate circuit. This simple move can help identify whether the power outlet itself is the source of the problem. Surprisingly, this straightforward adjustment has proven effective in resolving EMI issues for some users. Step number two, opting for non-conductive surfaces. Another effective strategy is placing your computer case on a non-conductive surface, such as a wooden desk. If your PC is on the ground, elevating it slightly using an appropriate stand can create a necessary distance between your computer and the floor. This can help mitigate potential EMI interference. By following these steps, you may successfully reduce or eliminate EMI-related disturbances. It's worth mentioning that while these measures can be helpful, persistent or severe EMI issues may require additional solutions, such as EMI shieldings or specialized cables. Now, if you have gone through the previous checks and everything appeared to be in order, it's time to turn our attention to your cables and wires. This step is crucial for ensuring your system safety and performance. Make sure your PC is turned off and also don't forget to turn off the power switch on your PSU. Then, begin by conducting a thorough examination of your cables and wires. Look closely for any telltale signs of damage such as exposed wires or frayed insulation. Even the smallest wear and tear can be a potential risk. But it doesn't stop there. Inspect your connections as well. Loose or improperly connected wires can introduce a host of issues. They have the potential to cause electrical arcing, which in the worst cases can lead to sparks and even pose a fire hazard. So you've gone through all the troubleshooting steps and the issue still persists. Well, now it's time to investigate whether your power supply unit might be the culprit. Even if you feel like it's an issue that you can solve yourself, I must emphasize that I do not recommend opening up your PSU yourself. In most cases, doing so could void your warranty or guarantee, and it's also potentially dangerous. If you are someone who enjoys tackling do-it-yourself projects, there are alternative methods to assess your PSU's health without cracking it open. One useful approach is to check the PSU's output voltage using a multimeter. For a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, please refer to the link provided in the video description. Nevertheless, my personal recommendation is that if your PSU is still under warranty, it's a wise decision to contact the manufacturer or retailer and have them inspect it for any malfunctions. This way, you can ensure your PSU's reliability without risking your warranty coverage. That concludes the main content I wanted to cover in this video. However, if you have any thoughts, questions or suggestions related to this topic, we'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to share your feedback in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.